Today on Pots and Trials I'm going to start cutting down some of the herbaceous perennials which is brought to you with the support of Dalak and Cobra Garden. Well after what seems ages of gloomy weather we've got some lovely sunshine, frosty nights which is great to be out in the garden and it means the last of the leaves will fall and I can get out and start to do some tidying up in the garden. What I want to do today is to start cutting back the herbaceous perennials. So these are plants that come back every year and flower in the garden but then in the winter they die back down to the roots. So it's really simple, it's just a case of cutting all this old growth off that's now finished for the year and disposing of it so we can tidy through the borders. And then Anything like this one, this is uh, an aster, uh, a lovely aster, quite a late flowering one, one of the very small sort of Michaelmas daisies. It's got these very rigid stems on it and it's one that doesn't need any support. Um, and it's got quite tough stems, so what I'm going to do with this one is to use my secateurs. Shears will do it, but these are quite woody, so it's literally just a case of going over the whole clump like this with secateurs and we want to cut down as low as we possibly can. As you can see, I'm literally cutting down to just above where, I'm gonna get covered in seeds here, cutting down to just above where we can see what will be next year's new growth. Um, and getting rid of all this now like this just helps you to tidy up the garden if you want to. Now, because you don't have to, some people leave it and do it in the spring, by which time this will have partly collapsed, but I want to just tidy through the borders and it makes it much easier if you get rid of it. But I say, the choice is entirely yours. The thing is, you need to make sure that you've done it by next spring when all this lovely new growth there at the base starts into growth. So it is simply, as you can see, quite a therapeutic job. Just trim everything down is always a bit you miss and get rid of it like that. Now this is a, a lovely clump here. Um, this would be perfect also at this stage for dividing because it's a small plant that was planted originally which was probably in the middle here. This is what tends to happen with perennials. Eventually the plant dies out but it radiates outwards like this. So this would be a good one to lift probably in the springtime and I could divide this into four or five new plants, replenish the ground and replant them back in. So that's how we need to cut it down. And secateurs are great for those woody stems. So we'll take these over to the barrow and look at some other things that need cutting down. There. So anything with a woody stem, I'm putting in the wheelbarrow to keep that separate. What I've started to do on this border, and this is a bit of a, a mixed border just here, it's got clumps of perennials that look good at various times of the year. We've got some evergreens and some dwarf shrubs in there. So there's always something in this border. It looks a bit of a mess at this time of the year because the perennials are dying down. So I'm tied in here as well. And what I've started to do on these soft perennials is chop them down with shears. And this was, or is, a lovely ligularia just here. It's got these lovely dark leaves on the side and sort of a bronzy colour on the top and it creates a lovely dome shape through the summer, makes a lovely specimen on this corner. But as soon as it turns cold at this time of the year, it collapses. So all I've done literally with this is go over it with the shears just to cut it back like that to the crown as you can see. The new growth will come from there and then this can all be gathered up with any leaves and other bits of soft plant material from the garden and I'm going to put these just in the trug. I'm going to keep them separate from the woody prunings because these can all be put onto the compost heap. These will rot down and just to help them rot down you can use your shears like this and what we want to do because they're quite lengthy is just to chop them into little bits. It just speeds up the decomposition process especially if we mix them with you know, any bits of grass cuttings or anything like that. So looking through this border, other things that can be trimmed down at this time of the year. Um, well, this is a lovely Flomis, Russellianer. It's got this green sort of ground cover. So what I'm gonna do with this, I will just go over it and pick off 
any dead leaves that are on it but I'm not going to trim this back down because that gives some cover there over winter for any insects and wildlife in the garden and I leave these quite attractive seed heads here these are lovely yellow worlds of flowers up the stem in the summer but you get these dry seed heads which look really attractive some people use them in flower arranging so they can stay until the spring but then other things like these stems at the back here this is Maclea which can be a little bit invasive it's called the plume poppy um, although they look woody they're not they're really soft and easy to chop down with the shears so they're going to come down and then other little clumps of things here I think this is a Veronica so it's just a case of working your way through the borders chopping down any perennials that have got no winter interest or any value at all so make sure you get rid of them and the other thing I would remind you if you have got labels in the garden once you've cut everything down of course you can't see where they were so if you've got labels just make sure the labels are visible there was an astrantia there there's a Coringa shoma there so it's just so that when you are working in the border you can see exactly where everything is and then once I've finished cutting everything down there's still a fair bit that I need to do I would just then have a quick rake through it to get rid of some of the leaves we don't have to get rid of everything of course because we're going to sort of come back on this later on sort of in early spring um, and of course if we leave a little bit of cover there it's good for birds and insects and if you're lucky enough to have a hedgehog in the garden they'll love getting out there into that undergrowth but I'm just going to lightly fork it just to take out footprints and just to relieve any compaction where you've walked on it so that water can drain over the winter so we don't have to get it too tidy at this stage it's just a bit of a, a, a first tidy up and then we can start and compost it so what I'm going to do is now take these woody prunings and show you how I get rid of those Now the way I like to deal with anything that's woody and these herbaceous stems I would class as woody is to shred them because if I put these into the compost heap they're just going to lie there in a tangled mass and not really rot down so a shredder is ideal for this you could cut them into lots and lots of tiny pieces if you want to but a shredder makes quick work of it so I'm just going to pass these through the shredder There you can see that gets rid of them in no time at all and what it does it chops them into pieces they're not shredded small small but you can see now that will go to the compost heap and that will rot down so much faster especially when I mix it with the soft material so the combination of the two and some leaves from the garden will make really really good compost so I've got my work cut out now for the rest of the day I'm going to take advantage of this dry sunny weather and we'll be back with you soon Well, thank you for watching Pots and Charles. And remember, gardens are just as important at the moment as they were back in the summer. It's lovely to get out on a fine day and get some fresh air. Next time, we're going to start apple pruning. So we'll see you then. Bye.